Good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening to all joined today. And welcome to another webinar organized by the Capacity Development Team of the Observation Coordination Group under the Global Ocean Observing System. So just want to let you know this webinar will be recorded. And if you have any objections, please let us know. Uh, today, we are going to provide you an overview of the WMO Information System 2.0, which we called WIS 2.0. So the WIS 2.0 is the framework for WMO data sharing in the 21st century for all WMO domains and disciplines. It provides the WMO unified data policy, which was recently approved and also the Global Basic Observing Network and makes international, regional, and also national data sharing simple, effective, as well as inexpensive. So the idea that no member should be left behind and the ob objective of lowering the barriers to, adapt, um, to uh, adoption has been at the core of WIS 2.0 development. So these objectives inspired the principles underpinning the WIS 2.0 technical framework, such as uh, adopting open standards and web technologies to facilitate sharing of increasingly variety of volume and also real-time data. Uh, today we have uh, my colleague, Mr. Hassan Hadouche, the manager of WIS 2.0 at the WMO WIS branch is going to give us an overview of what is WIS 2.0, how it works compared to the, uh, the existing uh, global telecommunication system, which we call GTS, the transition plan from GTS to WIS 2.0, and the benefits and the advantages of the new system, specifically for the ocean community. So without any further ado, I, uh, I invite Hassan to give us the presentation and uh, just want to remind you that at the end of the presentations, we will have time for questions and answers. So please uh, raise your hand or type your question in Q&A box, not in chat, but Q&A box, if you have any questions after the presentations. So over to you, Hassan. Thank you very much. I will just share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I am Asana Douche. I am in WMA Secretariat with Branch, and I am the WIS2 manager. And it's a pleasure for me today to be with you uh, in this webinar to introduce WIS2 and the pilot phase, and maybe to discuss about the transition from GTS WIS to WIS 2. Let's start by introducing WIS 2.0. First, why we talk about uh, WIS 2.0? We have a number of drivers from WMO, essentially the WMO strategic plan 2020-2023 and in this which is coming to an end and we are building a new strategic plan and in this strategic plan we start talking about how to leverage technologies in order to to make it easy for members to provide better services for the community the second point is the congress 17 it's um, from now it's more over than eight years. And in this Congress, members mentioned that they are not uh, prepared for the explosion in data volumes and the growing diversity of new data sources. They are not well prepared for the new type of data and the increase in data volumes. And finally, the CBS lead review of emerging data issues and they identify it again, the need to leverage the technologies because there is a whole uh, bunch of technologies that we can leverage in order to 
provide better services for the community, uh, like cloud computing, web services, data analytics, machine learning, and big data. A bit of a story. In 1963, the World Weather Watch was established, combining the observing systems, the telecommunication systems, and the post-processing and forecasting systems. And the global telecommunication systems was established in 1970 to enable WMO members to share between them products and data. And over 50 years, this global telecommunication systems enable members to share time timely critical data between them. But the GTS and the technology used by GTS still the same. It, and the GTS is limited to the weather community and doesn't meet the need of WMO, all WMO programs. This is why in 27, the Congress of WMO commissioned a new system, which is the WMO information system, which become operational in 2012, uh, in order to be to have an open system and to meet all WMO programs uh, uh, needs. And in 2019, there is there was uh, the WMO reform with two commissions, Infrastructure Commission and Services Commission, with a new approach, which is Earth System approach. We are not limited to the weather community, but we need to be open and to consider all the BLIMO programs. And in 2021, we have two interesting resolution approved by the Extraordinary Congress of WMO, which are WMO Unified Data Policy with two categories of data, core data and recommended data, core data to be distributed without any restriction and recommended data to be distributed according to the national or the provider data policy. And we have this global basic observing network also. This, this resolution will increase the data in GTS if we continue using GTS. And also the frequency will be increased. And in order to address this, these two resolutions and also to address the limitation of GTS and with the Standing Committee on Information Management and Technology, they design a new version of WIS, which is WIS 2.0, which is a system of systems using web architecture and open standards to provide simple, timely, and seamless sharing of trusted data and information by using internet and web technologies and adoption of open standards and APIs to make it easy to be interoperable with applications and systems. The context of WIS 2.0, the business requirements. As I mentioned, there is this emerging data issue, and also we need to support the GBON and the new unified data policy, and also to support all WMO programs, not only to be limited to uh, the weather community, and also to develop and design a new platform to support all these programs and to lower the barriers for the members to share and publish their data and also to access new products and services. And this leads to the functional requirements by using open standards. When we are talking on WIS2, we are talking always about to be open and open. We are using open standards and open softwares and also using web solutions, these web services and web servers, and leveraging the cloud-ready solutions and big data. And that leads also to the WIS2 technical foundation based on the use of the message queuing protocols, this uh, publish subscribe protocols, which are one of important protocol used by Internet of Things, and in which we adopt these protocols. 
And we are using also for metadata this RGC metadata standard. We learned from which one and we developed a new catalog for which two, which will be flexible and simple. And also we'll provide expandable service architecture and unified monitoring approach for WIS2. The WIS architecture. For WIS1, we have this architecture based on three components. We have the national centers in C, we have the DCPCs, data collection and production centers. For NCs, most of them are with mid services. For DCPCs, we have ETH, for example, because they are co collection centers. And we have also, for example, some programs like, for example, ECMWF, producing some data, or UMITSAT, producing some data, they are DCPCs. And we have JISCs, we have 15 JISCs. And the JISCs, this global information system centers, they provide the 24 cache for essential data, and also they provide the portal to access the data, and they provide the catalog for which one. This is the architecture for this one. It's a push mechanism. National centers and DCPCs push the data to the global information centers, the JISCs, and in turn, JISCs synchronize this data with other JISCs in order to have the data everywhere. In WIS2, we have a new design and new architecture based in two components only, the WIS2 node and the global services. And we are not, we, we, it's a dynamic mechanism. We are not using a push mechanism as for GTS and WIS1. We have the WIS2 node is the component to provide data and associated metadata. It will replace the GTS message switching systems because in WIS2, we are not using the GTS headers, but we are using this publish and subscribe mechanism with notification. All national centers and DCPCs are going to implement WIS2 node to exchange data in WIS2. And we are using web services, HTTPS, not FTP, as it is the case for WIS1 and GTS. And for WIS2 node, now need to provide access to all the users in the world, but only to some of the WIS2 global services. The global services subscribe to the WIS2 node, and then they will receive notification of new data. And they know from this notification how to access the data and how to download, and they, they, they download the data from the WIS2 node. This is the concept of WIS2. WIS2 node is central to WIS2.0. And as I mentioned, national centers and the CPCs, they will use this platform to publish their core and their recommended data. Wish to not publish data as files on a web server or using an interactive web service. They have their own MQTT broker, it's a broker, and then they send the notification of new data to the global services. And then the global services, through this notification, they know how to download the data and they don't load the data from the wish to not if it is core data. And for customers, they subscribe to topics in the global services and they can download data from the global services if it is core data, or they download the data from wish to not if it is recommended data. And here at with to node level, we have this control access to, to give the provider, the data provider, the access control on their, on their data. And recognizing the potential high demand placed on with to node to sell data to a global audience, with to provide high available, high performance global services to ensure that with to meets required performance levels. And we have for that, for example, global broker is used to notify data consumers of availability of new data. We are using 
the same concept as for, for example, for WhatsApp. When you subscribe to a group in WhatsApp, we re you receive notification or when someone publish a message in WhatsApp group. It's the same for with two. Through this global broker, you subscribe to the topic. When there is a new data, you will receive in real time notification about that. And then the broker, the global broker subscribe to the wish to not, and then they will receive notification of new data. This notification will be used by the global cache, which is used to provide at least 24 cache for the core data. And they download the global cache, download the data for wish to not. And for uh, then send also the global cache send the notification to the global broker and customers they will subscribe to topics from global uh, global broker and they will receive notification of new data and they know exactly how to download the data if it is core data they will download it from the global cache if it is recommended data they will download it from the wish to know And data consumers subscribe to topics at the global broker so that notification messages for that topic are immediately sent to them. And we are using a unique topic for each data set. And the topic structures is organized according to Annex 1 of the Unified Data Policy to make it easy to find the topic associated with the data you want. And this is the architecture of this topic. We have the channel to mention that if the data is from origin, that from the originating center or from the global cache. The version, just to mention the version of this topic. And we have the WIS2 to mention the system using this platform is WIS2. And we have the country, we are using these three ISO country code to, to identify the country. And we have the center ID to identify the center provider providing the data, because maybe at national level, we can have more than one, one, than one wish to node. And in order to identify each wish to node, we have this center ID. And we have the resource tip, just to mention if we have data, metadata, or reports. And we have also data policy to just mention if it is core data or if it is recommended data. And we have this earth system domain to like, for example, weather to mention if it is weather, climate, hydrology, atmospheric composition, cryosphere, ocean, space weather. And we have also the subcategories, for example, surface, based observations. And here, some examples of these topics. For example, this one is cache. And this is the version E of the topic and the tool. And it is from Argentina, this three ISO country code. And uh, this is the centroid, Argentina WMODIMO. And it's data, and it is core data, and it's for weather. And it's about surface-based observation, and it is same. And we have others, this one for Morocco, and this one, for example, the third one is TAMP. And we can also have some examples for origin. That means you can download this data from origin. It's the same. The difference is just we have here cache, and here we have origin, and same, and TAMP. And we will have for subcategories all kind of data. For example, for ocean, you can you will develop, for example, different, for example, bios, ships, etc., depending on your data. And data publishers create discovery metadata to describe the data sets because metadata are very interesting, also important. And this is why we have this global discovery catalog to provide the catalog for WIS2. And the, this global discovery catalog organized data set according to the same standard scheme used in the topic hierarchy. And data consumers, they will 
discover, search, browse the global discovery catalog in order to search the data. And then they know exactly the topics to subscribe in order to access the data matching their needs. And also finally, we have Wistu.0 introduced a global monitor service that will track what data is made available and whether that data can effectively be accessed by data consumers. We have this global monitoring center and this global monitoring will provide the dashboards that will support tracking of compliance against both the unified data policy resolution and also the GBON technical regulations. In summary, this is the architecture of WIS2. For the global services, we have these four components. We have the global cache, which is a storage providing a copy of the demo core data from NCs, DCPCs to be accessed by the users. It will be open to everyone. And we have for uh, resilience uh, more than at least two global uh, caches. And we have the second component is the global broker providing notification of all the data available in the global caches or in originating center with two nodes. Uh, users will subscribe to the global brokers and then they will receive notifications about the availability of new data. And we have this global discovery catalog, which is the, the, the platform providing the catalog for WIS2. And users, they can uh, discover and search the data from the global discovery catalog. And we have the global monitoring, which providing dashboards and statistics about the services of WIS2 and about the data exchange through the WIS2. And users or applications or systems can discover data services from the global discovery catalog. And then they will subscribe to topics in the global discovery, in the global broker. And then they can download the data from the global cache if it is core data or from the WIST node if it is recommended data. And also, in order to lower the barrier for the members to get them on board in WIS2, we developed an open software, which is called WIS2 in a box. It's, uh, it, it is a reference implementation of WIS2 node. That means, for example, with National Center, they can use this WIS2 box software to, to set up WIS2 node, which is based on this MQTT protocols and web services. It's an open software and we have many features for um, to make it easy for members to share and publish and also to access to data and product and services. And here you have the link to the documentation and also to the software for this wish box. In, it is a plug and play software based on open source and based also on standards. And you have two options. You can use the cloud technology to install and deploy this wish box, or maybe you can use your servers in your premises. And we provide some features in this wish box like for example, data conversion from CSV to buffer, because the buffer is complicated in, and many countries facing problems in order to provide this buffer format. And we provide this facility through this wish to box to convert a simple CSV to buffer. And we are using this publish subscribe protocols to notify availability of new data. And we have this use and visualize national network or international data and also maybe to access to some satellite or in WP products. And also you can discover, find some data from other countries and also you can monitor, use this wish box to monitor your national 
networks. WIS2 is open and this WIS2 box is based on open source software. This is a list of open source used in this WIS2 box. And also it's open, it's based on open standards. And this is the list of open standards used by the WIS2 box. The WIS2 implementation plan. Last year, we have this technical regulation for WIS2 approved by IFCOM2 and also by Executive Council in last month. And also we have a release 1.0 beta for the WIS2 box. And we started already a pilot phase for the WIS2.0 for one year, one year. And we have some global services and some WIS2 nodes already running. And we will use this in order to launch a pre-operational phase next year for one year in order to be ready for the transition in 2025 and with an objective to complete the implementation of WIS2 by 2030 and to stop the GTS by 2033. The goal of the pilot phase is to develop and deploy the global services and the WIS2 nodes and make integration between them in order to refine the WIS2 architecture and to improve technical aspects and also amend manual on WIS to be approved by Congress next month and complete guides to WIS and specify monitoring and initiate the transition phase. And we have some success criteria. For the global services, we have already two global services running. We have uh, France and uh, China, global brokers are already running. And also Australia and USA, they will provide global brokers also. And for the global cash, we have also two Global cash is already running. It's uh, from Germany and from Japan. And also we have Australia and Korea. They will provide additional, and USA, they will provide additional global caches. And for the global discovery catalog, we will have Canada, Korea, and China that will develop this global discovery catalog. And the global monitoring will be provided by Morocco. And for WIS2 nodes, we have some countries starting using the WIS2 box, like for example, Algeria, Argentina, Morocco, and Italy, they are using IBL systems and they upgrade their systems to be compliant with WIS2. And for Sweden, they developed their own WIS2 node. And we have also two WIS2 node for WMO programs for SMWF and UMITSAT for NWP and also for satellite data. And the WIS2 is for all WMO programs. And we have for hydrology three countries participating in this pilot phase for hydrology. And we have Billies for climate. They will develop WIS2 node for climate. And we have also for cryosphere Norway as a pilot project for cryosphere data. And for ocean, we identified already with Champica tanks to a Champica a pilot, and we will start this project as soon as possible. And it's open. We are, if you have any options, any proposal to set up a new pilot for Ocean, you are welcome. And also another thing is most of data of Ocean data are already in JTS, and it will be in with two through this gateway, we will develop gateway from GTS to WIS2. And we will use this success criteria to validate the technical regulation to be approved by next Congress in next month. And we adopted for this pilot phase of project management, and we have 11 packages for this pilot phase. We have four packages for the global services, global broker, global cache, global discovery catalog, and global monitoring. And we have two for the WIS2 nodes, for national centers nodes, and also for WM programs. 
And we have one for the registration and credential management. The idea here is to develop the procedure and the process how to register a new with Tunod. And we have one for the transition to develop these gateways from GTS to with 2 and from with 2 to GTS. And also we have this package for interface with ICAO. The idea here is to develop a bridge between WIS2 and SWIM, which is the platform we used by ICAO. And also we have this package for the documentation, WIS2 documentation in order to update the manual on WIS and the guide to WIS. And finally, we have this package for monitoring and reporting, and we will provide a final report for the pilot phase by end of this year. About the transition, as I mentioned, we will develop two gateways, one from GTS to WIS2, in order to have from day one all the data from GTS in WIS2, and we will have also a gateway from WIS2 to GTS. The idea of this gateway is, for example, if any member switch to WIS2 and stop dissemination data in, in GTS, the other countries, they continue receiving this, this data from this country through this gateway from WIS2 to GTS in order to have the continuity during the transition. That's it for me. Thank you. And if you have any question, you are welcome. Thank you very much, Hassan. And I think uh, uh, it is time for you to ask any questions now. And as I have mentioned, you can raise your hand or you can type your question in Q&A box. So uh, please feel free to do either way uh, to post your question. Uh, there's one question here already um, in the chat. Uh, and uh, you can go ahead, you can ask your question if you don't mind. Sure. Um, I was just wondering what the requirements are to become a subscriber to the global service to have access to the data. Um, you said that it was open to everyone and I'm wondering if you just need to like, go to the website, make an account and then have access or if there's more required. Yeah, thank you for, it's a great question. The global services is open to everyone. You can subscribe to the Topex. Anyone can subscribe. And you, you, when we, uh, we will have the global discovery catalog, you can discover the data and how to access from the discovery catalog. And then you, you also you will have access to the Topex. And then you can know exactly how to subscribe, what is the topics and what is the global brokers. And then you can subscribe and then access, um, you will receive notification of new data. And then in this notification, you will uh, have idea how to access and download the data. If it is core data is from the global cache. And if it is recommended data, it will be the download from the WISTO node. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Hassan. We have received a couple of more questions in the in the in the question and answer. I will uh, take the last one first. Uh, is the buffer format currently used on the GTS going to be the same format for Vis 2.0? Yes, it will be the same. We provide through this wish to box this facility, this conversion from CSV to buffer, just to make it easier for members to provide the buffer format. But it's, if you if you have in, in the wish to box, for example, if you are willing to use this platform for data sharing, if you have already the buffer format, you can ingest your buffer format to the wish to box, and it's okay. It will publish in the wish to global services, and everyone can access. If you don't have, you can provide only a CSV and then the wish box will convert it and will produce the buffer format and share it through the global services in WIS2. You have these two possibilities. If you have already buffer, you can use it. 
If you don't have, you can use CSV and it's okay. With two box, we'll do it. Thanks. And we have got a question from Anne Tran. Um, she asked for data providers who currently send data on the GTS via Met Office. Do we need to install VIS 2.0 or only Met Office will install VIS 2.0 and we connect to it? There How is, does that work? There is two options. At national level, you need to coordinate with the weather service, the Met service. If they, if you, if they collect the ocean data for you, no need to do for, for you. You just continue sending data to the Met service, and then they need to set up the WIS2 node, and they collect your data and send it to the WIS2. If your data are not in the web, they, you don't publish the data to Met service. Do you have two options? You can coordinate with them and send the data to the Met service. Or maybe you can install the WIS2 box or WIS2 mode and share the data uh, with the global services. But we're, when we are discussing how to restore new WIS2 node, you need to coordinate with the PR. Because for the security, we need to know exactly which WIS2 node and which what is the responsible for each WIS2 node. That means we need you need at national level to coordinate with the PR with the Met service. Uh, related to that, I have a question, uh, Hassan. Yeah. Uh, let's say if a, a center or a country um, agrees to become a VIS2 node for the pilot during the pilot project, especially yeah. for the ocean. Yeah. So uh, do you need that request to come through the PR or how the how how that works? Because if somebody who is in, 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 in this crowd um, uh, operating a, a data center would like to become a VIS2 pilot, uh, how, how can they proceed? What is the, the what are the steps that they should follow? If it is a program, for example, like ESWF or UMITSAT or something like that, no need to, to, to receive from a PR uh, an email or a letter mm -hmm. from them. But if you are a small organization, you need to coordinate with the PR and we can set up a pilot project. Yeah. Thanks. And we have a couple of other questions and I would like to ask them to uh, post their question. Taco, uh, would you mind uh, asking your question that you have uh, put down here? Floor is for yours. Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you for the presentation. Um, I would like to, to ask whether the uh, VIS 2.0 and the IOC Ocean Data Information System relate. Um, and um, the uh, Ocean Data Information System of IOC is for all uh, near real time and delayed mode data and information. And is that also true for the VIS 2.0? Because uh, in your last slide, you showed that the data come from the GTS and that, as far as I know, is only um, a new real-time data. So two, two questions in one, two related questions. Yeah. The first one is probably the, the most relevant one, uh, that how do these two systems relate or do you plan to, to uh, make them convergent in the future? Yeah, there is two options for, as we did, for example, for as we are doing, for example, for IKU data, they have the SWIM, they have the SWIM system, and there is the WIS2. And in the SWIM, they are using also this publish and subscribe uh, protocols. We are not using the same uh, protocols. We are using MQTT and they are using EMQP protocols. But we, we set up a task team, joins task team with members from IKU and from WIS in order to develop a bridge between the two systems. And we can do the same for ocean data. If you have a system, 
maybe we can build a bridge between the two systems in order to provide notification and to access the data. We can do the same. Uh, or maybe if you can, if you want to move to use the WIS2, which is easy, you can use, for example, the WIS2 box, or maybe you can upgrade your systems in order to be compliant with WIS2 and start publishing your data through the WIS2. We have these two, two options. I hope that I answered your question. Um, thank you. Yeah, it's it, it's. I take it as the beginning of a conversation. Okay. Yeah. And uh, for the GTS, we, as you say, for example, for from my slides, it's a new concept. It's completely different to GTS and with one. GTS, we are not for in with you in with two. We are not using the GTS headers, which are more complicated, and very difficult to maintain. Uh, and also to understand something, sometimes. In which two are not using that. We are using, for example, this, um, this notification. We still know that we'll provide the data and we'll not push the data, just send a notification of availability of data and provide access through web services to the community. And also we provide through the WIS2 box, for example, a control access on data. That means, for example, you can use the WIS2 box and you can share some of data and you can keep control access on some of, of uh, your data. Um, we have quite a number of uh, interesting questions here. So uh, uh, for, the, for the sake of the time, uh, we have 15 minutes left. So I hope uh, we can get through all the questions. Uh, now I would like to uh, invite Frank Muller to pose his question, if you don't mind. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can, go ahead. Oh, hello, hello, Hassan Champika. Thank you very much for a great uh, seminar. I'm Frank Muller Carger at the University of South Florida in St. Petersburg in the US. I'm an oceanographer. And I'm very impressed with the long-term uh, agreement that countries have had through WMO to share data through GTS. And I think that this is an important model for other science disciplines and oceanography in particular. And my question, I'm glad that Taco asked the question and initiated a conversation with you because I think that the ocean and the meteorology community need to work together mm -hmm. and the different countries need to do that. So my question is, as these systems develop, WS2 and uh, ODIS, I'm hoping that there's going to be very close collaboration and crosstalk between them. Uh, my question was, what's the scope? I know the GTS was always limited in scope on data volumes and such, but I wonder here, are you, are you thinking about, as the WMO and IOC think about greenhouse gases, for example, other variables that affect greenhouse gases in meteorological parameters uh, that go way beyond the traditional meteorological parameters. And that, that includes biogeochemistry, biology, and sometimes uh, full ocean depth parameters, which still affect meteorology. And you need that for modeling. How, how expandable are these data concepts? And I hope that this is discussed in your collaboration with IOC. Thank you. Thank you very much for your interesting question. Yes, when we designed the Swiss 220, we take into account how to meet the needs of all the new, the new programs, not only the weather. This is one of, um, of things that pushed to design a new version of WIS is to meet the WMO programs. For oceans, I think, yes, yes, I agree with you. There is a need to coordinate at national level between med services and ocean. I remember I worked for a while in a med service. And there is, at national level, there is, for ocean data, there is many providers and many department, department taking care of some of uh, ocean data. And there is a need to coordinate with them. And, and I think, 
WMO need also to take to consider that and also maybe to to start this coordination and to help and support this coordination at national level or at global level. Uh, uh, for this uh, with two um, concepts, I think we can you can meet all the need, um, needs. The concept is easy. It, we have the, with this concept of these topics, as you see, for example, we can share and publish any kind of data. It's not only the weather, any kind of the data, it, will, it can be shared and published through this concept of WIS 2.0. And we started already, for example, sharing some testing, some uh, publishing, some uh, warnings. We have a pilot for the warnings and we started already uh, publishing this. And it's easy. Just send a notification, and through the notification, you give access to to the uh, to the, uh, the data. How to access the data through this? We, we are sharing only URL HTTPS, and it's easy to access the data. And it can be for any kind of data, ocean or atmospheric. Uh, uh, compositions or anything, any kind and tip of data. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Hassan. And to add to that, Frank, uh, we are in the in the WMO Secretariat working with uh, the IODE yeah. to see how we can, uh, I mean, uh, collaborate between the two systems. Uh, uh, to make it easier for the users and, and the, the data providers, especially the ocean community. And also with regards to expanding and including uh, the, the ocean uh, um, observations beyond what is required, at the, at what is used by the, the MET community right now, means the biogeochemical and biological variables. Uh, I'm, I'm sure these will uh, be taken into consideration in the future because uh, with WMO's approach to the earth system monitoring uh, concept, we, the plan is to include all and go beyond the, 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 the NWPs and, and with the systems we are working on right now. Uh, it is something uh, that will happen in the future, but not at the moment, yeah. because we are trying to yeah, work with the new systems, how to, how to introduce the new systems to the existing requirements and then uh, we'll uh, look at uh, expanding it uh, beyond the current uh, uh, practices. So going to uh, another question, um, we have another question from Alejandro, Alejandro de la Maza. Sorry I, if I mispronounce your name. Uh, can you ask your question, please, if you would like to? Otherwise, I can read it. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Um, uh, Alejandro de la Maza from Chile. Um, which are the requirements for holding a word note uh, on ocean data, for example? Uh, I, I saw that it's um, uh, not, uh, not designed yet or, or not offered. And it, that could be discussed on Goose Regional uh, Alliances, uh, which um, join some uh, several countries on each uh, uh, rim or, or, or each uh, uh, ocean uh, coordination uh, uh, services. If I understand well your question, you are asking how we can, for example, have the ocean data through the WIS2. This is the question. Uh, uh, yes, and uh, there was some uh, notes uh, already designed for ecology, for uh, yeah, ice, yeah. Uh, but yeah. were not uh, notes designed for ocean. So my question is, yeah, uh, yeah. how do you design yeah. us for ocean? We started already discussing with Champika in order to set up a pilot also for ocean, and we, it will happen in the next. Weeks, I think. I hope that in the next weeks we will set up a pilot. And it's an open question for everyone. If you have an idea to how to, if you need, if you are willing to 
to participate to this pilot phase, you are welcome. Just send us an email if you have, for example, some data at national level or at regional level, and you want to test the Swiss to platform for sharing this data, we can set up a pilot for that. You are welcome. Please feel free if you have any idea, any proposal to set up pilot phase for ocean data, you are welcome. We will set up one with Champica, thanks to Champica, in next month maybe. But it's an open question to everyone. If you have any idea in proposal, we are open to any proposal. Um, I'll pick another question here from Megan uh, Skanderberg. Uh, Megan, would you like to ask your question? Um, this is a really cool idea. I really like the idea of making things uh, much more accessible um, to anyone that wants them. I feel like right now we send J data on the GTS and we don't know where it actually ends up. Um, so that, that part is really cool. Um, I'm wondering, uh, because I think that Argo has both core data and recommended data. And according to your little schematic there, it kind of looks like if you have recommended data only, you have to have your own WIS2 node, or not recommended data only, but if you have recommended data, it looks like you need your own WIS2 node to serve the data consumer. Is that correct? The WIS2 node is used for both, for core data and for recommended data. For core data is just to provide the access to the global cache. And the global cache, they, they will download the data from the WIS2 node and then provide access to the community. For recommended, no, you can you send only notification to the global broker, and then the global broker notify, notify all the customers about the availability of data, and then they download the data from the WIS2 node. Is, that means that WIS2 node is used by, for both, to provide the data for the global caches, the core data, and also to provide recommended data to the others, the customers. Okay, so it sounds like we have to work with our at our national level uh, to decide who would be that node for Argo. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. And then my other question related to that is then every single time an Argo profile is sent out on the GTS, which is thousands, say per day then that data center will get a notification each time? Yes. Okay. Yes, of course. Yeah. It's like WhatsApp, as, as I said. It's, we are using the same concept. When you subscribe, for example, to a group of WhatsApp, if anyone publish a message, all the members of the group will receive the notification in real time. If you publish, for example, 100 uh, message, the, the members will receive 100 notification. It's the same concept. Thank you, Megan. And thanks, Hassan. I think uh, we may go for another two questions. Uh, we have yeah four minutes left. Uh, so uh, Anne, you have a question on, um, on the chat. So would you like to ask that question? Oh, hi, thank you for the presentation. It's very useful. So like on the GTS, we have uh, data on the GTS within 30 days from the collection date. So on the WIS 2.0, is there a limit on how long the data has been collected to be on the WIS 2.0? No. In WIS 2.0, you have two options. If it is in WIS 2 node, the WIS 2 node, they have a retention for data and they think they need to provide at least three months okay. the data at, at the, the WIS 2 node level. For the global services, for the global cache, they will provide at least 24 hour data access. But in WIS 2, we are also, we have another project which is the open CDNS. We are developing this. It's always open. In WIS2, everything is open, open, open. <laughs> open standards, open softwares, etc. 
And it will be the same. And the open CDMS, we will provide, as we provide the WIS2 box, we will provide a CDMS, a climate data management system, for archiving the data. If you install, if, for example, members install the WIS2 box and the open CDMS also, they will also provide an archive for the data. And can we send a replacement of the data that we already sent to WIS2 now with the new uh, better quality data? The yes, same? yes, yeah. yes. Well, yeah. Everything that we we are using in GTS can, it will still be the same in WIS2. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, one last question. Um, uh, from Long, uh, he asked that uh, currently we ask uh, our communities to push their data in buffer format. With this 2.0, will there be uh, more flexibility? Can can we use other data formats? And what is the advice for the ocean community in that regard? Yeah. In which two, as I said, we are using open standards and open standards, that means also standards for formats. And for example, the data are used by the NWP products and the global centers, these NWP centers, they use the buffer format. This is what we advise to use the buffer format. But for example, if you want to publish some data just to serve a community need, for example, ocean community or something, it can be flexible to use other kind of data. For example, for the warning, we are not using buffer for the warning. We are using XML, for example. That means, for example, for some specific uses, we can maybe uh, uh, use different formats. Okay, uh, the last question from Marta. Uh, Marta, would you like to ask your question? And the rest, uh, I think if there are any other questions, please send us an email and we will try to respond to you um, uh, through email. So Marta, your question, you have the last Hello. chance. Uh, good afternoon. I, I think my question has been answered uh, already because I was asking about uh, the da data sending okay. to, the, to the new system. And I think that you, you have answered it. Okay. Okay, so great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, thank you so much for joining um, uh, this webinar and uh, uh, to let you know that the recording will be available through the GOES webinar website. Uh, so uh, you can uh, have the presentation and also the, the, the recording access uh, through that uh, GOES web webinar site. And uh, if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us and we will answer, uh, try to answer as um, yeah, the questions you have. And I also have finally the um, um, open invitation. If there are data centers who are willing to uh, become part of the pilot uh, phase of this uh, initiative, please contact us and we will provide you with the information and see how we can uh, um, uh, yeah, get more uh, people involved in this pilot project. So um, I invite you to consider that. And if you have any questions, come back to us and we are waiting to uh, see many um, centers joining us in the pilot uh, phase uh, to uh, move this uh, initiative forward. Uh, finally, thank you very much to all who joined and thanks to the team, uh, the capacity development team of the observation coordination group who has uh, uh, working behind the scenes to uh, bring these webinars uh, to the community and uh, have a good day everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Bye bye.